In this video, I will be making a Thoxy Pillar 6 arene, which is a molecule belonging to the class of pillar arenes, or often just called pillarines. Pillarines consist of repeating hydroquinone units linked through methylene bridges. Pillarines are a newly discovered type of molecule, of which the first one, Pillar 5 arene, was discovered only 15 years ago. Pillar 5 arene is the least strained pillarine and is therefore the dominant product under most synthetic conditions. But Pillar 6 arenes, which were found a year later, have become much more desired, since they are able to bind larger biologically relevant guest molecules. Potentially, Pillar 6 arenes can be bound to drugs that have a larger structure and can then be used to deliver the drug in places it normally wouldn't be able to go. For example, a drug alone could be unable to pass the blood-brain barrier and therefore be ineffective, but when bound to a pillarine, they can. Though making pillar 6 arenes has been a challenge, since they have significantly more strain than the pillar 5 arenes, and would mostly occur as byproducts, which complicate purification of the pillar 6 arenes. Now a new method has emerged for the large-scale direct production and purification of pillar 6 arenes, with almost no production of pillar 5 arenes, and no use of chromatography. That sounds very promising. So let's go try it out. To start off, I set up a large 1 liter 3 neck flask and add in a big stir bar. Then I attach a gas adapter and a stopper. I then connect an argon line to the gas adapter and let the argon flush the flask. Then under argon flow, I attach a funnel and add in 9 grams of paraformaldehyde. Then, I will add in 25 grams of 1,4-diethoxybenzene, which is the whole bottle. Now I will add in 500 ml of chlorocyclohexane, which is also the whole bottle. Then I remove the funnel and put a septum with a needle in its place. Now I will add in 25 ml of boron trifluoride ethyl ether complex, which again is the whole bottle. But this time I will inject it into the setup. As I'm injecting the complex, the solution slowly turns green, and we can also see that there is a little too much argon overpressure, which pops out the stopper and adapter, but it's not really a problem. When everything had been added, I leave it to stir at room temperature for 1.5 hours. As the reaction progresses, it turns to a very dark green. In this reaction, the chlorocyclohexane templates the synthesis of the pillar 6 serine. And the boron trifluoride complex is a common Lewis acid catalyst for these reactions. So by combining the templating effect of the chlorocyclohexane with the common Lewis acid catalyst, it is possible to achieve a ring size selective method that requires no chromatography. So after 1.5 hours the mixture looks like this, and the reaction should be finished. So I quench the reaction by pouring in 300 ml of ethanol in two portions. I then leave it to stir for a bit, and when that is finished, I set it up for vacuum filtration. I simply filter it all through a paper filter and collect the residue. The filtrate is just a yellow-orange liquid and is discarded. I put the filtrate in a dish and it's very soft since it's still wet. But since there are some large black chunks, I decided to take it out earlier and crush it up. Then I set it up for a vacuum filtration again and wash it with ethanol. I repeat the process of crushing and ethanol washing several times. Before the last wash, it looked like this. I crushed it and then washed it again. Then I let it dry on the filter for 2 hours and it got a lot lighter. Then I crushed it into a powder again and now that it is a lot cleaner, I can move on with the next step. So I set up a large flask and add in a stir bar. I then add in 500 ml of DCM. I then attach a funnel and put in all of the crushed residue from before. Immediately the mixture turns brown and I leave it to stir for 30 minutes. When it's done, I set it up for vacuum filtration and pour the whole mixture onto a paper filter. After everything had filtered through, all that is left on the filter is a brown mush, which is washed once with some DCM. The residue is then discarded and the green-yellow filtrate is taken. Now, I wash the filtrate multiple times with a saturated sodium bicarbonate solution. I shake the funnel and vent regularly, but there is no pressure buildup. After washing it several times with sodium bicarbonate, I take the organic layer again and wash it once with some brine. Then I collect the organic layer 
and put it into a beaker. Now to dry it, I will dump in a bunch of anhydrous magnesium sulfate. I stir the mixture and then let it sit for a while. After that, I filter the mixture through some cotton and sea light and I collect the now clear yellow solution. Now I simply boil off all of the DCM. I attach a gas adapter and pull the vacuum on the flask with some light heating. This way, the DCM vapors will simply go through the pump and vent into the fume hood. I leave it overnight and when I come back the next day, a white residue has coated the flask. I take off the adapter and when we peek inside we see a bunch of white powder. So I poured it all into a dish and scraped off as much as I could. In the end, I have 5 grams of product, which corresponds to a yield of 18.3%, but it can still be further purified. So to the flask that still contains a bit of the product, I add in 150 ml of chloroform. Then, to the chloroform, I add in all of the product that I collected. When it looked like most of it had dissolved, I added in 150 ml of acetone. I let it stir for a while, and we can see that the mixture has turned cloudy. Now to crystallize out as much of the product as possible, I will put it into the freezer at minus 26 C for a day. After taking it out of the freezer, we can see a bunch of product has crystallized out. So to collect the pure product, I set it up for vacuum filtration. I simply pour it all onto the filter and let it dry for about 15 minutes. Then I put it all into a dish and we can see it is one big white piece, probably because it's still a little bit wet. I poke around a bit with a spatula and we can see that it crumbles quite easily. So to turn it into a powder, I simply crushed it. After crushing it and putting it into a small flask, I am left with some nice white powder, which should be almost pure ethoxypillar 6 serine. I will link the procedure I was following in the description. Compared to the procedure, there were a few differences, mainly that the color of the residue and the filter didn't fully line up throughout the process. Also, my powder was a lot more white than theirs before the recrystallization. I also spilled a little and I didn't wash as much as them since I ran out of DCM. So my final yield is 17.6% compared to their 31%, which is pretty decent all things considered. So that was it for this video, thanks for watching and make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And as always, a special thanks to all my patrons. See you in the next one.